This is News Talk 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. And uh, online, as we promised, we have the car pro, Jerry Reynolds. Now, now, Jerry, before you get into your car of the week, i, I got to ask you a question. Sure. Have you seen the new Batmobile? <laughs> I've seen pictures of it. Okay. Are they going to sell that thing? Because I need one. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I don't know if that's real or not. I I see so much stuff on the Internet that's, that's fake. You think they faked uh, it? I do. I mean, it, it's like everybody thinks the Chevy El Camino is coming back because somebody went to a lot of trouble <laughs> to put a picture online. And, I mean, it's detailed with, you know, here's what engine it's going to – it's all fake news. I mean, and I suspect the Batmobile is too, but I'm with you. If it comes, I want one myself. Well, that I mean, it looks like a real American muscle car from, from like 1970-71. Yeah, it does. It really does. And uh, uh, I, I think we should. I think somebody should go. And, and I know Dodge tried to do it with the Challenger, but it's not quite there yet. Somebody needs to come out with the giant thing that says "Get out of my way." I think they'd sell a million of them. I do too. I always thought Lincoln Lincoln could do that really well because the Batmobile that was in the the TV series, uh, the original, was a Lincoln Town Car chassis. As a uh-huh. matter of fact, yeah. I have driven one of the original bat car, the Batmobiles. It, it, they drive horribly. <laughs> they look like they would drive horribly. Not a good they commuter. <laughs> no, no, you know you don't want to be in the HOV lane in that. But they look cool. I'll tell you. Yes, yes, they do. And I've looked kind of cool this week too in this uh, Range Rover Discovery Sport. This is a fairly small. In fact. This is the smallest and the least expensive Range Rover uh, that's sold here in the United States. It's a compact SUV. It's about the size of, oh, call it a Ford Escape. It's about that size. But it still has a lot of the Range Rover characteristics, which the two main ones with any Range Rover is great interiors and a and an unbelievable uh, all-wheel drive system. And this, this has got both of those. Uh, it, it, you know, it, here's my problem with this one, and I didn't give it a very good review. And that review will be up Monday at CarPro USA, but I didn't uh, give it a very good review because of the engine. It's got a two-liter four-cylinder turbocharged engine, and it's just not enough. I mean, this thing really drags you down, and, and there's some turbo lag in it, which makes me crazy. You know, you hit the accelerator, and then two seconds later, something happens. And and other than that, it's really nice. It's not out of line on price, like Range Rovers often are. It's fifty three grand on the window sticker, which you know that's about the, the price of uh, a comparable Lexus SUV or a Lincoln SUV or even the Cadillac XT four. They're all in that fifty to fifty five thousand range. So it's not it's not overpriced. It's uh, it just doesn't deliver. It's got which shocked me. It's got a third row seat, which is oh, optional. Wow. But I got to tell you something. I, it's a joke. I mean, and you're paying thirteen hundred dollars for that third row seat that you can't do anything with. Uh, I, I don't even know two three year olds could fit back there. Why they did that? I guess just to say, hey, we offer it with you know seven passenger seating. But it, it's it, the bottom line on this one. Uh, there's better choices out there. Yeah, pay pay a little bit more and get the next size up. Yeah, exactly. You, you, you know what's funny? I think that's the first time I've heard you say something bad about uh, Range Rover. Well, it's just, I mean, it doesn't. It's not there, huh? Me. It, it just does it. I, I, I love Range Rovers. I've been a, an owner myself for over a decade. But, boy, in this one, there is just better choices out there. So, Jerry, I'm looking at your Car Pro USA uh, in your news section, and something that's been a really big issue here in Lubbock is pedestrian deaths. And yes. uh, it, it's something that, uh, number one, there's, there's, I guess they're saying that people are on their phones while just walking out into streets. Um, we got a lot of people, uh, something we've seen here, and I don't know that we've had deaths yet, luckily, but people are just walking across interstates and, uh, and the loop out here, and it's, it's dangerous. I, it really is, and I do think it's it's cell phone use and not paying attention to where you go. I, I've literally watched people walk into poles 
because they were on their phone. Some of know? the best YouTube videos out there are people <laughs> walking in the polls because and you phone. don't want to laugh, but I'll be darned. Oh yeah, you yeah, can't I, help. you can't help it. You got to laugh at that. <laughs> but I, I wanted to call attention to that uh, because it's some, I think that's something that we could all pay attention to and make a difference and get that number down. The death rate for pedestrians in 2019 was the highest it's been since 1988 which is amazing. It's got to be cell phones. The other story that I really wanted to call your attention to, because I'm getting a lot of questions on autonomous cars, cars that that drive themselves, and I mean fully autonomous cars. And we haven't seen one yet. Tesla has got the autopilot system, which is not completely autonomous. And then I, I reviewed a few years ago the Cadillac, Super Cruise, which is the closest I've ever seen to a car that would actually drive itself. Um, and, and that video is online at my website. But the National Transportation Safety Board issued a report about a death in 2018 of a guy going down the highway in a Tesla, wasn't paying attention to where he was going. He was actually, now they find out, was actually playing a video game when the car suddenly decided to take a hard left turn going down the freeway. Nobody knows why. It was a, uh, it was an error of some kind. The guy was killed. Two other cars were, were involved in the accident, but this is, uh, I put the report up there for everybody who says, I really can't wait till these self-driving cars come to market. Well, read this report. You're probably going to want to wait because we're nowhere near there right now. Yeah, and and honestly, I think that it it took a long time for this report to come out. This is two years later. Oh yeah, this is two years later, and there's been there's been numerous death numerous deaths since then uh, in Teslas, and you know it's just and here's here's my other problem is is a is a self driving car trying to make a decision, you know, so. Here's what I always picture in my mind. You, you, you're you on a two-lane road. You come up over a hill. There's a mountain to your left. There's a big cliff to your right. And you come up over the hill in that self-driving car, and there's a five-year-old standing in the road. That car's got to make a decision. Do I hit the mountain? Do I hit the child? Or do I go off the cliff? Mountain. Absolutely, <laughs> if we're making that decision. Yeah. But if you're in a self-driving car, what does the car do? It probably takes you off the cliff or runs over the five-year-old. Or both. <laughs> I would say it probably runs over the five-year-old. Yeah. But, we, I mean, how do you really know Yeah. until we get deeper into this? That's decision-making that, as a driver, we could make. And we'd all do the same thing. Yeah. We'd avoid the five-year-old. Right. But that car's not that smart. Right. And that car has no emotion. So this this is why I put that article up. It's a fascinating read. It's a sad story. It is obviously, but but interesting for those who really think they want a self driving car. Yeah. Um, well, and and to me, I, I I don't like the thought of it. But I, I the only way I can see that you can do self driving cars at all because uh, there's too much unpredictability on a road is for every single car to be a self driving car that can communicate with each other. That's the only way. That's correct. And I, and I just don't see that happening. People aren't going to give up their, their cars. No, they're not. And, and you know, what, what are these cars going to cost? No. That's something we haven't even come close to scratching the surface of. Teslas are very expensive uh, and still not perfected from the standpoint of, of self-driving. So I, let me put it this way. I don't think we'll see this in my lifetime. Yeah. All right. Well, Jerry, thank you so much for coming on. We'll remind everyone that uh, the website's carprousa.com. The review that you talked about today will be up next Monday. And they can also hear you every single Saturday from 11 to 1 uh, on 95.1 FM, 790 AM KFYO. I will be there Saturday, guys. Thanks, Jerry. You too. Bye-bye.